you know, when we're talking about TF2 updates and the name Jungle Inferno pops up, a lot of people would associate that with the Pyro. Oh, it's the Pyro update. It was where the Pyro got all those epic new items, a, a, a whole free. And, uh, you know, the Pyro is the focus of the update. I mean, it's in the name, Inferno. It's all about the Pyro. But in my eyes, Pyro is like the least important part of this update. I associate this update mainly with a philosophical new way that the TF2 development team has taken the game since 2016. When I heard that Jungle Inferno first came out, I didn't read the patch notes, I didn't read anything, I reinstalled the game, I uninstalled for obvious reasons, but I reinstalled the game when I heard the updates came out, I'm going in blind, okay, it's the Pyro update, new cool weapons, okay, cool. I'm just going to co- go play with my favorite scout loadout, which is the 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 Bonk and the Sandman. That's what I... I that, that was my go-to a lot of the times when I was just fucking around. And immediately, on my first life, I, I had a visceral reaction of complete confusion and disgust. And I couldn't believe it. I used the Bonk. And after I used the Bonk... I was moving slower than a fucking heavy. And then I tried to stun a guy with the Sandman. And and my Sandman ball did fucking nothing. And I'm sitting there looking at the fucking screen. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. This has to be uh, like something bugged out. Something went terribly wrong. No, no. This isn't how those weapons work. (laughs) Like, no. These weapons that I have been using for for fucking years don't work like this. This has to be a mistake. There has to be something wrong with the server. This can't be real. This can't be happening. This is fucking bullshit. And then immediately, I went over to the fucking patch notes, and I read them, and, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. The, the, this this is just the worst update in the fucking game. Part two. No. Jungle Inferno, to me, is not the pyro update. Jungle Inferno is number one before anything else. It is the partner. It is the twin brother. To meet your match. The worst update that Team Fortress 2 has ever received. And that in my humble opinion. Killed the old TF2. And turned it into the zombified. Piece of shit. Barely playable mess that we have today. Meet your match is responsible for that. And then Jungle Inferno. Is an addition. To that terrible fucking update. And as you could expect. It is almost as bad. It is only second. To meet your match in terms of damage done to the game. To put it simply, Meet Your Match was an attempt to competitivize TF2, right? That was what the update was trying to achieve. It was trying to bridge the gap between competitive and casual Team Fortress 2. That's like trying to bridge the gap between the Earth and the Sun. It's like, dude, that gap exists for a reason. If you put the Sun right next to the Earth, everyone's just going to get fucking cancer and die. Like, that's not a good idea. And and that's exactly what fucking happened, by the way. Now, Meet Your Match attempted to competitivize the game by forcing down matchmaking down everyone's throats. Now, competitive matchmaking, ironically, is completely irrelevant to the conversation. Nobody cares. Nobody plays it because nobody has any interest in competitive TF2. No, the main issue comes from casual matchmaking, which, first of all, is is the direct cause for the bot crisis because it favors automated joining that favors bots and bot hosters, right? But it also tried to to turn the casual Valve server TF2 experience into some sort of fucking quasi-competitive game with round limits, right? With no scramble, with you not being able to switch teams and probably hit an MMR and a bunch of fucking bullshit that has no place in the fucking... TF2 pub experience. That's how they try to competitivize the game in that update. Now, Meet Your Match mostly stayed away from balancing. It didn't do a lot. They gave you a hint. They gave you a very important hint, you know, but they didn't do a lot, but they nerfed the fucking whip. It's like, dude, in what universe is the fucking whip an overpowered item that needs a nerf? They, they like fucked up the righteous bison, but you know, this was only a prelude that we would not know the depths that Valve would go to with their dumbass balancing decisions until Jungle Inferno, until next year. 
So Meet Your Match basically laid the foundation for Jungle Inferno. And Jungle Inferno's main legacy, its attempt at competitivizing TF2 came through balance changes. It came through the most insane, ridiculous, unjust, most unjustifiable nerfs that this game has ever received in its entire fucking history. The way I would dub a Jungle Inferno's sum total results in a simple phrase is I would call it the war on fun, right? Because the way that it approached balancing and the way that it mercilessly slaughtered all of these unlocks and all of these side grade play styles, it's like, what other justification can you use other than the TF2 dev team at this point in time genuinely tried to make the game as unfun as possible? And I would say that the war on fun is a very tragic deviation from TF2's old game design philosophy before Meet Your Match. You know, TF2 has always been a game that has prioritized fun for the majority of the player base. These awesome side grades and unlocks that gave you options in the way that you approach the game is what made the game last as long as it did. The amount of ways that you can play TF2 and you could have fun in this game, that's what makes it great. And the old TF2 dev teams understood that. And with the war on fun, the opposite approach was taken. You know, it's, it's pretty interesting. I, I, I mentioned this clown before, Uncle Dane, in my Meet Your Match video. I said that he rigged the pyro versus heavy election, which is true. It's a, it's a fucking fact. But it's interesting that I'm mentioning here again. But I, I guess it's not a surprise since these two updates are so closely linked and so related that I'm, I have to mention this moron again. And once again, his grubby, disgusting fingers are somehow involved with this update. Jungle Inferno is a continuation of Valve trying to cater to the competitive TF2 plebs, right? Okay, now, a very interesting tidbit about Uncle Dane. The, the only thing I can remember, I haven't watched an Uncle Dane video in fucking years, and I don't plan on doing it again, but one thing that I know is that he, he, is, he had an idea about how Team Fortress 2 should be balanced. And I remember this vividly. And, and he actually said this shit. He, he, he gave you his philosophy. He, he called it trickle-down balance. <laughs> like, unironically. Unironically. Seriously. This is what this fucking moron said. <laughs> trickle-down balance. You should balance a game like Team Fortress 2. A casual, fun shooter. Balance it around competitive players because the balance is going to trickle down to everyone else somehow. I, I, I don't fucking know. But but th this fucking moron actually said this shit. I'm not making this up. And, you know, th this is completely in line with the other shit he said. I mean, this, this fucking freak wants to remove random crits from the game, right? Like He, he also said that people are going to install TF2 because they want to play it competitively, right? Because that's the future of TF2. So it's no surprise that this pleb was invited to the Valve offices before this update came out. Yes, he actually got a tour of Valve, and he got to talk with the TF2 dev team. All right, maybe you people want to believe in coincidences, but I don't. I think all the pieces matter. And I think that this fucking balding midget getting invited to the Valve offices before this update comes out, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think... The results of Jungle Inferno are perfectly in line with the rhetoric of this guy. I mean, he's a vocal supporter of the competitive TF2 Virgin Fest. It, it, like, it makes perfect sense. And hey, he comes into the Valve office. Oh, this guy has a YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. Well, he, he's like the voice of the game, right? Uh, it's, uh, well, we don't know how to balance our game. Let's listen to him. Uh, he 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 supports competitive TF2, and we want to make TF2 competitive. Yeah, I, I'm sure this guy's a genius. Let's listen to everything he says. Hey, I don't know. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist. Maybe I'm insane. But I think it's perfectly in line. Like the results make perfect sense to me from like that perspective. If they wanted to cater to Uncle Dane and to competitive TF2, I think this kid once again. I think this guy, this fuckhead, this cocksucker, I think he's involved with making this update as shit as it was in some sense. 
Now, I'm not saying that Uncle Dane specifically wrote down every single like balance change that that the TF2 dev team put in with the update. But I'm saying like the mere fact that I can even have a suspicion that this guy had any input on the game's balance is completely fucking insane to me. No, seriously, can you imagine Robin Walker sitting there with with his game design team and sitting there and, and, and carefully listening to the advice he's getting from fucking Uncle Dane? Are you fucking insane? Like, that guy would have been laughed out of the room. <laughs> he would have been told to fuck off. What are you talking about? You're, you are going to tell me how to make a video game. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck? Who is it? What? I should kick your fucking ass. Who is this? You want to remove random crits from TF2? You think TF2 is a competitive shooter? That's when you want to make it, you fucking moron? Get out of my fucking studio. Get out of my office. I'm going to kick your fucking ass. That's what would have happened if the fucking old development team was there. That guy would have gotten just, just fucking destroyed, you know? And instead, we got this new school of TF2 devs who are so fucking retarded, who are so fucking incompetent that they're actually sitting there listening, taking notes. Yes, 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 we want to appease you. See, we don't give a shit about what the player base wants. You know, fuck the players. No, no we want to appease these fucking 0.1% of the, the fucking game's player base, these competitive turbo virgins, and some fucking midget from California. Because this guy, this guy, he's really, he's really the voice of the game right now. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? So I, I would like to share an anecdote with you that's good about illustrating my thoughts on why competitive TF2 is a fucking joke and should not be taken seriously. So I was watching Star underscore Stir, whatever you want to call him. I, I, he was streaming something. This was a while back before he came back to TF2. But... He was talking about his experience with competitive Team Fortress 2. And he was talking about how he was talking with one of the best scout, competitive scout players in the game, Sizer, who, who was really good at competitive TF2. And he was talking to him, Star and Sizer. And they were talking about Mad Milk. Star mentions the Mad Milk to Sizer, this competitive TF2 god. And Sizer asks Star when Mad Milk is mentioned, Oh! What does Mad Milk do? See, I want you to think about that. I want you to sit there and I want you to, to let that sink in for a little bit. The, one of the best competitive TF2 scout players in the world doesn't know what the Mad Milk fucking does. There's people with 20 hours in the game, free-to-play scout gibbous players, that know what the Mad Milk does. But this guy, who's been playing for thousands of hours, doesn't even know what that what a fucking unlock does for the scout. And he's been playing this class nonstop for years. See, why does he not know that? Why does he not know such a basic thing? He doesn't know it. Because he doesn't need it, because he doesn't actually play Team Fortress 2. He plays competitive Team Fortress 2. He plays TF2 Pro Mod. And in TF2 Pro Mod, the rules are different. And the way that it's played, TF2 Pro Mod, doesn't fucking have any translation to the actual video game. So the idea that you are going to balance the actual video game, TF2, to appease these fucking Turbo Virgin freak shows who play their gay little mod and they adhere to their gay little rules so they can have their gay little meta. And you are going to pander to these people who make up 0.2% of the entire fucking player base and are so fucking insulated from the actual game that they l basically don't know anything about it, even though they're technically been playing it for fucking thousands of hours, years on end. They don't know the real game because they are completely segregated from it. They don't fucking care. They don't want to play it. They don't like to play it. They don't like TF2. That's the most important fucking thing. And you are going to destroy the fun for for the majority, the last majority of the game. 99% of the player base. You're just going to leave them by the wayside. You're going to tell them to fuck off. No, 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 no. See, 
we have to pander to the guy. We have to balance to appease the guy who doesn't even play TF2 and who doesn't even know what 90% of the unlocks in this game do because he only plays what his stupid ass fucking whitelist allows him to play. That is fucking retarded. I, I hope I like I hope I illustrated my point here. I think it's a very telling quote. What does Mad Milk do? You know, it really says a lot about society, you know? <laughs> but don't you know B40 is the best TF2 player that ever lived? We should all listen to what he has to say because she knows the game better than anyone else. Like, once again, B40, first of all, I have to mention, B40 is a known cuckold. Like, this is, this is immortalized in a poem that I will show you now. But besides that, once again... He doesn't play TF2. He plays competitive TF2. He plays TF2 Pro Mod. He doesn't actually like TF2. And this is the thing about competitive TF2 players. They don't actually like TF2. They don't like playing the real game. You know? They like playing their stupid gay ass mod. And that's completely fine. If these fucking morons want to play the shitty mod and they want to turn TF2 into a competitive game and they want to play with their plugins, once again, it's a free country. Play on your shitty servers. Play with your shitty plugins. Have fun. Far as I'm concerned, it's the exact same situation as like freak fortress players, as like people who play WarioWare or like Balloon Race. It's like, why don't we ask Balloon Race players for advice on balancing TF2? They're also playing a shitty mod with shitty plugins. Well, actually, no. Balloon Race is pretty awesome. It's not shitty. But, you know, why don't we ask trade server players, trade Minecraft players on their opinion on how TF2 should be balanced, you know, the actual game. They're also playing with their plugins. You know, they're not any lesser than competitive players. There's probably more of them. Why don't we ask prop hunt players on how TF2 should be balanced? They're also playing a mod that has nothing to do with the actual game. Except, you know, at least they're having fun. At least they're playing with the spirit of TF2. The competitive freaks, they, they, they shit on the spirit of TF2. They, they try to make the game as unfun as possible. And hey, you know, masochism is what it is. If they're into that, that's fine. But why the fuck should the rest of the player base be forced to adhere to these fucking losers? They shouldn't. They honestly should. There's no fucking reason to to listen to these people because they don't understand TF2 and because they don't play TF2. They like their version of the game and they already have their own version of the fucking game. At the end of the day, you know, like this is extremely important, right? If competitive TF2 players don't like a weapon in TF2, they just ban it. They've been doing it for their entire history, and that's never going to change. And, you know, they already have a method of dealing with things that they don't like in TF2. So, you know, if they don't like an item, who fucking cares? Why should we balance to appease them when they're just going to ban it anyway? (laughs) It doesn't make any fucking sense. So, yeah, what I'm saying is shouldn't be controversial in any fucking sense. Vanilla TF2, the actual game, the game that 90% of the player base actually knows and plays and loves and enjoys, that game should never be and should have never been in this fucking case compromised for the sake of appeasing a very small, delusional ridiculous, absurdly pathetic fraction of the player base, 0.2% of the player base should not have a bigger voice than the fucking majority. It's that simple. You know, TF2 is a game that is built to be fun. I think the most hilarious part of this whole thing is that you expect competitive TF2, they, they would all be like about adding more skill into the game and make the game more skill-based, right? And it's like the opposite actually happened. Like the Sandman. The Sandman was one of the most skill-based unlocks in the entire game. The Ambassador, same thing. That, that was an unlock that rewarded you for being good at the game. And those weapons got fucked the hardest. Yo, because competitive TF2 players, they don't actually want skill. They want their specific brand of skill. Skill that they deem acceptable, that isn't offensive to their very delicate 
sensibilities, right? They don't want anything that upsets them. It's like some autistic kid that only eats the same meal every single fucking day, right? That's the same thing with competitive TF2. Like they don't actually want nutrition. No, 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 no. They want the, the shit that they're used to and the shit that they've been doing for the, for the past 20 fucking years. They want that and they don't want any substitutions. They don't want anything else. No, it has to be like this. Nothing else. No, is this something new? Is this something different? Oh, my head can't handle it. Oh, my severe autism is going is going to kick in. Where's my Ritalin? <laughs> wow, save me. Please nerf all of these fucking scary unlocks. I'm, I'm gay and I'm scared. Eh, well, that's what happened, basically. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm sure that's how it happened. Okay, wait. I got to check this. Like, I got to make sure. We, we need to see this. So, okay. This is the fucking 6 we 6 whitelist. Let, let's see the, the banned secondaries. <laughs> you serious? This is the actual fucking whitelist. They have the base jumper banned to this fucking day. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? So there you go. There you go. This is the end result. So you fucking try to cater to these people, right? You try to placate them. You try to satisfy their autistic needs. And in the end, not only is not a single one of these weapons that has been nerfed to shit used in competitive TF2, some of them are fucking still banned to this day, even though they're fucking useless. Even though they're even more useless than they were before the nerfs. They're still fucking banned. They're, they're, they're still not allowed. So, again, I think you need to understand that trying to please these fucking people is fucking useless. You're just fucking destroying weapons that are never going to be used in the first place by these fucking subhumans. No, but really, could anyone actually seriously explain the point of balancing weapons to appease a player base that is just going to ban weapons that they don't like anyways? It's like, well, th the solution is already there. <laughs> you don't need to help them. They're they're already very satisfied playing the same way that they've been playing for the past 15 years. They don't actually want you to, to change the unlocks so that they're usable. They don't actually want to use different things or unlocks in their in their version of the game because they don't they don't want it. They want the same shit. They want what they they're used to and what they like. And what they like is not TF2. What they like is not options. What they like is the one fucking way to play that they actually play. So I would like to take the time now to jump into directly to the cases of the weapons that were affected by horrible nerfs in this update, case by case. I've already talked about the Ambassador and the Sandman in separate videos pretty extensively. Those are two of the most insulting nerfs to me personally, but this update still fucked a lot more weapons that I haven't mentioned yet. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, let me ask you a question. When the fuck has the base jumper in human history been an overpowered weapon? Seriously. Like, like I'm, I'm honestly, I'm asking you. Like, maybe you played before 2017. Maybe you pr played before Jungle Inferno. And you can tell me how the base jumper was too good. It was too good of a weapon. Oh my god, it's just, it's just like everyone was equipping the base jumper nonstop because it was the just the best choice. The ultimate soldier secondary or demo man primary right like you like seriously you, you gotta be fucking kidding me right but really really the base jumper right like the, this parachute that you have to give up gunboats for or, or your shotgun or your gunboats or, or fuck it even the banners are better than this fucking thing right or as a demo man you give up your pipes to have a parachute and it was too good. It was too overpowered because, oh my God, you could redeploy it at will and you could sometimes dodge rockets. Like, I think I've seen that once but before Juggle Inferno when a soldier was like dodging my fucking like projectiles as I was trying to hit him when he's like controlling his parachute. That's not overpowered. That's fucking awesome. Like, he gave up his gunboats to do that. 
that very specific niche thing that is somehow overpowered and breaks the game. Like, you have to be a fucking moron. Like, you seriously have to be the biggest fucking clown on this planet to say that this weapon at any point was overpowered. You have to be a fucking idiot. Like, it was fun. Like, it was fun. The the air control loss seriously fucked up this weapon. And the redeploying also fucked it up to the point where there there's no reason to use this thing. There was little reason to use this thing before it got nerfed. Like, again, it wasn't a very commonly seen or used weapon because it just wasn't, like, that good to where you could justify giving up your fucking gunboats or your shotgun for. Like, you saw this very rarely. A- and the fact that it had some niche usage where you could, like, dodge rockets if you're good enough in the air, like, that deserved the nerf. Like, honestly, man, fuck you people. If anything, once again, if anything, this weapon should have gotten buffed. And they fucked it. They fucked it. Because I guess, I guarantee you, some fucking virgin... Some crybaby, competitive loser, fucking sweaty Dorito breath motherfucker didn't hit his epic airshot compilation clip because the guy redeployed his parachute midair and he got butt hurt and he went into the wild offices and he begged mommy to save him from this incredible thing, from this scary, scary new thing. And hey, well, they did it. Fantastic. This this weapon that was barely used in the past is now never used. Fucking fantastic. Great. Good job, Valve. No, but seriously, I doubt you can find one guy that is willing to die on this hill that is going to say, yeah, the base jumper was overpowered and it did deserve a nerf. You know, like you have Valve apologists for, for almost every stupid fucking decision that they take, but... I can't imagine even one guy actually being delusional or retarded enough to where he's going to say, yes, this this balancing decision made complete sense. No, like the only justification for nerfing the base jumper is that it's a war on fun and the base jumper let you do a fun thing and we didn't like the fun thing and we nerfed it. We destroyed it because fun is bad because TF2 is not supposed to be fun. We're not, we're not, we're taking it in a different direction, in a new direction, in an epic esports competitive direction. We're listening to these epic gaming gods and we are going to make this game as unfun as possible because that's what the game, that's what TF2 should be. That's TF2's future. Esports, not fun. Suck a dick. All right, let's see what they say about the bonk. This weapon was designed to allow scouts to pierce hotly contested areas. While it does this quite well, it doesn't require enough skill or carry much of a downside. Well, you're fucking stupid. Whoever wrote this is a fucking moron. I want his name, and I want his fucking badge, and and I want him to get the fuck out of my face. Are you kidding me? So, seriously, it doesn't require enough skill. Well, okay, to use the bonk effectively... You need to know where the fuck you're going. You need to know the map if you're trying to like get past sentries. Like that's in itself that is skill on its own. If you're using it to like block rockets and shit and like ju- jumping into people and trying to get them to self damage, you know, if you're doing that fun shit or even taunt killing, you still need to be good enough. You still need to have skill to know how much your bonk is going to last, to to know how to use it, where to go, how to make people fuck up, and you need to know how to get out after you do it. That is skill. Like, that's, that's just a fucking fact. Then they say that it doesn't carry much of a downside. Well, let me explain to you, you fucking moron, what the downside is. The downside of equipping the Bonk Atomic Punch is the fact that you're giving up your secondary slot to have a pure utility item when you could have the pistol, which is a great damage item. You know, like the pistol is fucking awesome. It's a good weapon. It does a great deal of damage. It's a great boost to whatever scattergun you're using to also have the pistol so you can fucking kill people, which is what the scout does. He's a guy that runs up and kills people, and giving up the fucking pistol is a big downside. 
And the bonk definitely was awesome. It was, it's one of the most unique, fun weapons in the game, in any game that I've ever seen. Like when I first like saw some YouTube video that like showed me how to use this weapon. Oh, you can like run into fucking soldiers and make them kill themselves. You can like block your sentries from taking damage by like jumping in front of it. You can like ru- take the, drink the bonk and start taunt killing people. It's all very awesome. You like trap people in corners and you taunt kill them. It's awesome. And then if you're good enough, you get out. You know? It's like, what a great, unique, fun, and awesome weapon. And of course, Bob just had to take a fucking shit on it for no fucking reason. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, for what purpose? You know, it's like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Now, of course, the root cause, once again, is competitive virgin thinking. Like, that's who this update is appealing to. And I have no idea why. I don't want to know why. And I shouldn't be asking why competitive sweat lords despise the bonk and think that it's too good. It's completely irrelevant. Because in the fucking real world, in the actual video game Team Fortress 2, everyone with a fucking brain knows that this weapon is completely fine. And competitive virginity should not come into play when balancing this fucking item. It doesn't make any sense. And, and I got to cover my bases here because I know this is going to come up. And I'm going to have some kid tell me, oh, the nerf actually wasn't that bad. It's actually still a usable item and it's still okay. Well, listen, just because the item is still not completely useless doesn't justify the nerf. At the end of the day, the bonk atomic punch was never overpowered. It was always completely balanced as a secondary. If you give up your pistol for this item... You should have a good utility item. That is, it's that simple. And the fact, the downside of it, the fact that you can move as slow as a fucking heavy is completely insane as a scout player. Because all it takes is one guy to like realize the downside and chase you. And if you took a lot of damage, you are going to be basically like a fucking helpless cow rolling around in the grass while this guy just completely fucking rapes you. And basically, this weapon's usage in the field, how long you can stay bonked doing whatever it is you're doing, has been halved. Because you basically have to spend half of the time while you're still bonked covering the gap and like making sure that you have distance between whoever's chasing you. Because if they catch up to you and the downside kicks in, you are going to be completely fucking useless. And like the weapon's utility is actually like decreased by at least a third realistically they also fucked the criticola it's like they decided to take a shit on the twin brother drink items for no fucking reason you know it's like the criticola seriously the fucking criticola the crit of fucking cola was an overpowered weapon in your eyes it was too powerful you know the criticola was like legitimately probably the least used scout secondary you know, like the pistol is great. It's great for killing people. The bonk was great. The The flying guillotine was also very used because you could combine it with the Sandman. So the Criticola was like on the bottom of the fucking pecking order for scout secondaries. It wasn't very used because, you know, the options that you had made it so that there wasn't, you know, it's like it was okay, but... Out of all the options, there was little reason to use it. If anything, the Criticola needed a fucking buff, and they fucking nerfed it. The entire point of this weapon is that you drink the Criticola, and now you have the advantage over enemy players to where you are going to mini-crit them. And then they nerf this weapon, and they remove that entire advantage, and all it does is it equalizes the fucking playing field. You drink the fucking thing, and you're marked for death as you're using it. So, so like, what the fuck is the point? There's no advantage to it. <laughs> like, it's just a weapon that you fucking drink, and then you die in one rocket? Like, that? that's a good scout secondary now. Really. You people are fucking insane. This is the most clown shit I've ever seen. They have successfully fucked the utility and the unique items that Scout had in the secondary slot. All of them. That is honestly an achievement. I mean, they even fucked up the guillotine, for Christ's sakes. Like, the Sandman nerf would have been bad enough for the guillotine. But they also legitimately went out and said that this weapon needs a fucking nerf on its own. Because if you hit your flying projectile tiny-ass knife across the map on someone, 
you're a noob that doesn't take any skill. Fuck you. That's pure luck. We're going to remove any benefit you would have gotten from that. So go fuck yourself. Like, yeah, the guillotine totally needed to get a fucking nerf. Absolutely. Right. Like, it's like they were trying to make every single scout secondary that isn't a pistol complete shit. Well, I mean, if, if you were trying to achieve that, hats off. You, you did a great job there. Okay. This one's fucking hilarious. The Yora Turtle reward. Like, I thought this was a fucking nerf until I read the patch notes. And I'm like sitting here. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. They're, they're actually playing this. They're trying to pretend that they buffed this weapon. I was like, what are you fucking talking about? This is the least used spy knife. While silent kill and rapid disguise on kill are good, the downside on this knife is extreme. So, wait. <laughs> they're telling me, they're telling you that not being able to disguise with the disguise kit is an extreme downside. And, and instead of that, they gave you a... A fucking downside that removes a third of your fucking cloak. Are, are you fucking retarded, dude? Are you actually fucking kidding me? 33% of your fucking cloak is gone when you equip this knife. You know, that thing cloak that you need as a spy to traverse the map? Like, that's how you play the class? Because not being able to use your, down, your fucking disguise kit, that was an extreme downside. Not having a third of your cloak, which instantly makes this the worst knife in the game and the worst spy item that you could equip, that's not an extreme downside. Nah, that's completely fine. Like, are you people actually fucking stupid? Seriously, this is apparently a buff. They, they buffed this weapon by making it the worst knife in the game. It was like, it, it was the least used knife before. Well, then I don't know what the fuck it is now. Because it's a complete fucking sack of shit now. It's the most useless, worthless side of fuck that. It's not useless. It actively makes playing spy one third, 33% harder. Because cloak is fucking necessary. And I have people telling me when I'm trying to be a disguise spy that, oh, oh, you should use the your eternal reward. It's actually not that bad. No, no, it's, it's, the, it's the shittiest knife in the game. What are you talking about, dude? Like, this is, this is fucking horrendous. There is, like, I use this fucking knife all the time before it got buffed, quote unquote. It was pretty fucking good. The downside really wasn't that bad. It made sense from a balancing perspective because, you know, again, like, the rapid disguise and the silent kill are really good. If you have fucking cloak and you can actually position yourself. Without it, this weapon is fucking trash. I mean, damn. that That's an epic buff. They buffed this weapon so hard that it went from a weapon that I, I use sporadically to a weapon that I literally delete off of my inventory because I know I'm never going to use it because it's, it's a big pile of shit. That's a great buff. All right, let's talk about heavy. The gloves of running urgently. This weapon got fucked. All right, so before the Gru used to mark you for death. When you had it out, you took mini crits. So they say in, this, in the patch notes that it was too easy to bypass this negative feature because you could, a lot of the time, use the gloves to get to mid or wherever you're going faster, but you could holster the gloves right as you're about to get into the action, and thus you're not going to take the mini crits. Like, already I would say that's fine. Like, that's really not that big of a deal. Like... You can't be 100% certain, by the way. Like, you are going to holster the gloves now right as you're getting into the action. Like, sometimes the action comes before you expect it. Like, a scout sneaks up on you, a soldier that's, like, ju rocket jumping behind you, a sniper that's hidden somewhere hits you. You're going to take the mini crits without seeing it coming sometimes, you know, even then. But, okay, sure. Let's say that I accept the fact that this weapon maybe needs to be nerfed a little bit and it needs to be reworked because it's too easy to bypass the downside. Fine. Well, see, they went about it in the worst, stupidest fucking way possible. Like, they just made this weapon complete shit for solo heavy play, right? Because the weapon drains your health. The Gru drains your fucking health. If you use it from spawn to mid, you're going to lose half of your health. And if you want to bypass 
you know, the fact that you you got your health drained, you can't even take a med pack to replenish it, you know, because it's not damage. It's, you're just draining max health. You have to sit in a corner and wait for like fucking 10 seconds for your max health to be replenished to normal levels. And so you can go out there and, and actually be a fucking heavy <laughs> with your fucking health pool, which is fucking stupid. That's the entire point of the weapon. <laughs> like, there is no point to this weapon anymore if you're a fucking solo heavy. So the only way for you to bypass the downside and to be an actual fucking heavy <laughs> w- without sitting there and waiting a- and removing any advantage you could have gotten from the speed boost is if you have a fucking medic up your ass. That is fucking stupid. Like they mention it right here. Lack of speed is used to balance the heavy's high health overheal and damage output. If you wanted to target something, if you wanted to nerf this weapon in some way, you should have nerfed it specifically for heavies that have a fucking medic up their ass. If you have a pocket medic, you don't need that much mobility anymore, right? Like, if they just remove overheal or they diminish the effects of overheal that you can only get overheal to like 50 health like 350 right like that would make the heavy that has a medic up his ass if you have a pocket medic that makes you like make a choice okay if i want to get to mid faster if i want to get out of spawn faster if i want to have some mobility i can equip the Gru, but i'm not going to get overhealed nearly as much or at all you know like that would make sense Instead, they chose the opposite direction in which they nerfed solo heavies. And that is fucking stupid because solo heavy is the most boring thing in the game, right? Like this is the entire problem with heavy is like if you have a medic, you're probably going to have a good time. But if you don't have a medic, it's going to be a frustrating slog shit fest. And, you know, you're better off just playing a fucking different class. And like the, this nerf like pretty much single-handedly like made me like almost never played a class because this is just the direction that they're taking the class in like they're basically like making sure that as a solo heavy you have the like least fun experience possible and like they're just saying that you basically need to have someone pocketing you to to play the class because you're going to be punished if you don't and i feel like that's stupid like tf2's design is like what's great about it is the self sufficiency and how like teamwork is actually optional a lot of the times. But as a heavy, you're just like forced to have someone pocketing you if you want to do anything. And of course, they did the same shit for the fucking eviction notice. Like they, it also like this baby ass speed boost also drains your health. Like the entire concept of a weapon that gives you a speed boost draining your health to the point where you have to wait in a corner somewhere hiding to regain your health for the exact same amount of time that you would have spent walking if you didn't have the speed boost is fucking retarded, terrible fucking balancing design. Like, it defeats its own purpose. These weapons do not have a purpose, except if you have a fucking medic up your ass. And that is terrible. That really is shit. Like, a a heavy that's getting pocketed is already a force to be reckoned with. Like, he shouldn't be rewarded with having these weapons be available only to him. Like, that's what I'm trying to say here. The heavy that doesn't have a pocket medic is the fucking guy that should be getting the mobility boost. I mean, for fuck's sake, they do it in the next weapon on the list. They nerf the overheal for the fists of steel when you have that weapon equipped. So they could have done the exact same thing for the eviction notice and the the Gru. And it would have been completely fine. And it would have actually made sense. And it would have incentivized on some level solo heavy play to where you didn't have to rely on a medic, you know? But of course, of course, that that would have made sense. That would have made sense. They would have made solo heavy more fun to play. And you have to remember, this is the war on fun. That is not what they were trying to achieve. I mean, what else can you say? Like poor fucking heavy. Honestly, like this is the least played class for a fucking reason. This is why nobody fucking likes it. And and, like they decided that the Gru actually needed to get fucked like this. Like even when I was talking about the potential overheal nerf, I'm still not sure if that would be necessary. You know, probably not. Like the heavy was never an overpowered class. Nobody actually believes that, (laughs) honestly. So, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the fact that you know who 
rigged the fucking pyro versus heavy election war thing. And, you know, if heavy won like he should have because he was actually winning before the rig, you know, maybe we would have gotten the fucking Siberian snowstorm update instead of Jungle Inferno. And hey, maybe in that timeline, this game isn't a fucking disgusting piece of shit. But hey, we, we got what we got, man. It is Jungle Inferno. It is the Pyro update, at least by name. So you, I still have to mention the Pyro weapons. And I mean, there's not a lot to talk about. They're fucking shit. I mean, the theme of this update is nerfing all of these fun side grade unlock weapons and, and turning them to shit. So it's no surprise that the new weapons that they added for Pyro are also complete shit. The Dragon's Fury. Everybody was using that shit for a fucking week right? <laughs> and, and then nobody was using it because it's the worst flamethrower in the game. It's terrible. It's a flamethrower that requires aim to use. It doesn't do enough damage to justify the fact that you have to aim. And it's also the worst flamethrower for air blasting, you know, except the flog. Because like, you can't, you, like, there's a fucking cooldown after using your primary fire to when you can air blast. And no other flamethrower is, has that downside. So there's no fucking reason to use this weapon. Because its primary fire is dog shit. And its air blast is also the worst in the game. Why would you use this? It's garbage. Like, if you had to put in the cooldown on this weapon for the air blast. To where it's twice as slow as a normal flamethrower. It, it should be twice as good of an air blast. Like, that would make some sense at least. Like, if you reflect the rocket, it should be a crit. Because you have to time the fucking air blast with the Dragon's Fury twice as... Like, you have to be twice as precise because it's twice as slow. So there should be some sort of bonus. Like, if, if you air blast someone, they should go flying across the map. But instead, you just have the same air blast that's just slower. On already a flamethrower with a bad primary fire. Like, then they added the Thermal Thruster, which is, again, it's just fucking terrible. It's an awful secondary. I'm going to give up the fucking Flare Gun, the Scorch Shot for this. I'm going to give up my Shotgun for this thing. Oh, I can fly across the map. That's great. That's fantastic. But I have to wait for like five seconds after activating the fucking jetpack before I can switch back to my Flamethrower. So by the time I land, I'm literally useless. And it's just like... I, I'm, I'm just dead. This weapon sucks. It's terrible. Like, if they made it a passive, if they just made it something that you don't actually have to switch your flamethrower off of, then maybe it would be good. But as it is, it's a terrible fucking weapon. Like, this weapon should be fun. It could be fun. But it's so bad that it's just like, you know, there, there's no real reason for you to use this over any other secondary. You have the fucking gas can, which is like, how often do you see this used? When's the last time you've seen this used in an actual TF2 game? Not counting MBM bullshit, obviously. It's like, you know, this this thing, this is the one thing, the one secondary that's worse than the jetpack, I guess. I mean, Jesus, what a piece of shit. Then you have the pimp hand, which is a joke weapon, which would be funny. You know, it's like, I have no problem with joke weapons. You know, the fish is awesome. The pan is awesome. Everybody loves joke weapons. It would be a nice cherry on top if it was like if the pyro got some actual good weapons that he also got this cool joke weapon. But like this joke weapon is probably the least shit out of all of the, those that got added. So it's just like it's like a slap in the face. You know, all of these weapons that got nerfed, and, and all of these, like, weird-ass decisions, like, honestly, weapons that I've never in my life have heard people complaining about getting nerfed in this weapon, like the fucking base jumper. And all I have to ask is one thing. Well, if all of these weapons that nobody actually fucking, like, disliked or ba barely had any experience with in the game were nerfed, why wouldn't you nerf something like the fucking Gunslinger? A weapon that people have been complaining and bitching about for fucking decades. And in my opinion, at the very least, like, you should remove the health buff. Like, mini sentries as stupid as they are, fine. I can accept it. But why does it give you 25 health? <laughs> they, they've, like, removed every single, like, health bonus from unlocks in the game. Like, the Darvid's Danger Shield. You had the Milkman set. Those things were stupid, and they were removed. 
but the gunslinger still gives you extra health to use an item that basically turns an engineer into a fucking spam machine. Oh, four one, four one, four one. Like you know, as a normal engineer, you have to like think about you know I'm, I got to build up my sentry. I got to move it here. I have like risk involved. If I'm moving it, I need to be careful. I need to think what I'm doing. Then you equip the gunslinger. You just fucking spam four one and you play and you're completely fine. A lot of times you're you're, you're just it's basically a fucking upgrade. You know, why the fuck wouldn't you do it? You can 2v1 people alone, and it's great. And it's a completely brainless item, right? It's an annoying item that people have been bitching about for years. Like, seriously. If you combine all of the people that have cried in human history about the base jumper and the Criticola and the fucking gloves of running urgently, even if you combine all of the bitching about those weapons, they don't even come close to the amount of complaining that has been done about the gunslinger, right? So basically what I'm saying here is that there's no way you can pretend that this update, the ridiculous ass nerfs in it, had anything to do with actually listening to actual community feedback that was not present here. You know, and it had nothing to do with making the game more skill-based. You're going after all of these weapons and you're hitting them with these ridiculous ass nerfs because they're too annoying or they don't take enough skill then why would you not nerf the gunslinger? Oh, <laughs> of course. Is Uncle Dane very righteously defended the gunslinger. And, and he said, he gave, he gave everyone a very interesting theory on why the gunslinger is hated. See, you know, you would think that people hate mini sentries because they're really fucking annoying. Eh, but, you know, Uncle Dane doesn't believe that. No, no, no. See, people hate mini sentries according to Uncle Dane, because Stir, Star underscore, told them to hate it. Yeah, this isn't one of the most annoying weapons of the game. No, no, no. People only hate it because Star told them to hate it. Right. That makes sense. And then he got into a very embarrassing Reddit argument with Star, even though Star was not even playing TF2 anymore. Like, he had to drag him back into the game for some pathetic fucking cheap drama because, I don't know, like, that that's the scapegoat for why the gunslinger is a fucking shitty, terrible weapon that nobody likes. Yeah, Star did that. Fuck off. So yeah, I, I think this is another example that Uncle Dane is a fucking idiot. And you should think about that. Why was Jungle Inferno and why was Meet Your Match so shit? Well, when you're pandering to fucking idiots, you know, the results are going to be like this. You know, th there was no other way this could have gone, right? Like, if the TF2 dev team wants to satisfy a fucking moron, they're going to have to do some moronic shit to do that. Well, there you go. That's what we got. Can you believe it? The most fun you can have online. That was the tagline for TF2 years ago. And it was a perfect fucking tagline. It was a fucking fact. You know, TF2 really was the most fun you could have online. There was nothing like it. <laughs> Fuck today. To this day, there's still nothing like TF2 in its golden age, in its heyday. And that's because it was built on being a fun fucking video game. And that's because they gave you a shit ton of fun options to, to play with and have fun with in, in the fucking pubs in the vanilla TF2 game. And, it, and instead, instead of doubling down on what makes TF2 get great, they decided to, to take that tagline, the most fun you can have online. They put it into a dumpster, and then they lit it on fucking fire, and then they took a shit on it, and now we have this fucking measly, zombified, piece of shit game we have today. That's what we got. And for what? To appease a bunch of competitive morons that don't even like the fucking game, that are just going to play their own shitty version no matter what you do? That's what you threw away the fucking dream for. Seriously, fuck you. I really think it's hilarious that this entire update and meet your match was built around pl like placating and catering to these competitive kids. And in the end, to this day, I think after all this time, looking at this with hindsight, retrospectively, you can see that while the, like they still didn't give a shit about competitive TF2, they like threw them a bone. 
with all of this bullshit. But at the same time, they, they're not supporting any tournaments. They're not sponsoring any any actual TF2 competitive, right? They don't really give a shit. Competitive matchmaking is abandoned completely. Nobody plays it, obviously, so it makes sense, right? But, like, everybody knows at this point. It's been fucking six years. Wait. Seven years, almost, since Jungle Inferno. And competitive TF2, everybody knows that the fucking competitivization of TF2 is a joke, failed experiment that didn't work, has no future, and and Valve doesn't give a shit about it either anymore, right? Like, they're not even trying, right? But so they've stopped catering to, to these kids after Jungle Inferno, which is good, but see, the damage is already done. Right, like they didn't revert any of these dumbass decisions. It's like they gave, they tried to competitivize the game, right? Then they abandoned that idea, but they didn't revert any of their stupid fucking decisions from that brief period in 2016, 2017 that completely fucked up this game. And we're like in this fucking limbo purgatory where we have all of the damage. Of this fucking failed experiment, but they're not even like trying anymore to placate the competitive kids because they know that 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 was a horrific mistake that didn't make any sense. And competitive TF2 is a joke; it doesn't have any future. And they they stopped caring. They stopped even pretending to care. So all I have to say is, if now you and everybody fucking knows that this was a mistake, what reason is there? To not revert most of these nerfs, you know, like there's no fucking reason that the base jumper should not be at least reverted, if not buffed to, to before Jungle Inferno. There's no reason for the Sandman to be nerfed, right? And yet to this fucking day, we're we're living with the consequences from this fucking ridiculously absurd and moronic like administration of tf2 now we have like a different potted plant that's in charge of the game and you know they're not even like trying to balance the game anymore right which you know again i would say is probably a good thing like this this new 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 school of tf2 devs is completely hands off when it comes to balancing all they do is add like taunts and hats and like shitty low effort maps but they, they've stopped trying to balance the game I would be completely fine with that if they reverted this dumbass fucking update, right? That would be completely fine. But like you have to like actually come to that conclusion that yes, almost every nerf in this update is a fucking terrible mistake and it doesn't have a reason to exist and we should revert it and the game is going to to find its footing once again, right? Like that would make complete sense to me. I think in large part, the reason why there's not like an uproar about this and why like reverting Jungle Inferno doesn't come up at all in the community, like at least from what I can see, is that most of the people that were pissed off by these shitty ass updates, meet your match in Jungle Inferno, they're basically done with the game, right? They they, they fucked off or they barely play it. And most of the, the consistently... And most of the TF2 player base like comes after these updates and they legitimately don't know any fucking better. And one thing also that pisses me off to no end is these fucking valve apologists. Like you can find these idiots on YouTube, of course. And, and like the, the, the shit on a stick kid, for instance, you will always find these idiots who I assume also are new players who are legitimately bullshitting and and posting this fucking moronic propaganda that says, yeah, the ambassador actually was overpowered. Yeah, the sad man really was too good, and it did deserve a nerf. And, you know, these people are also, also like, fucking, like, brainwashing these Zoomers who, like, legitimately don't know any better. Like, honestly. So, yeah, I mean, really, I do think these people are fucking douchebags. They're pieces of shit. Like, if you don't know any better, keep your mouth shut. And if you do know any better, why are you bullshitting people? How can you say with a straight face that the Sandman was overpowered, you fucking clown? Like, either you didn't play before Jungle Inferno, or you're a fucking moron. Either way, like, the fact that people listen to garbage like this is honestly, like, it it gives me, like, a fucking, like, high blood pressure or some shit. (laughs) 
So yeah, I mean, I don't really blame the noobs, like the new players post Jungle Inferno, like not knowing any better. It's not their fault that they don't have the experience to know that this update is complete bullshit. And that something like the fucking Sandman or the base jumper wasn't overpowered and didn't need to get nerfed when they're getting bombarded by, by this fucking ridiculous fucking valve apologist propaganda. You know, it's like, of course, they don't know any better. What the fuck are you going to do? These fucking clowns that tell them this shit, they're the fucking problem. What else can I fucking say? Fuck this piece of shit update. Fuck Jungle Inferno. Fuck Meet Your Match. Fuck Valve. Fuck everyone involved in making this piece of shit. Fuck Uncle Dane. Fuck competitive TF2. And, and, and if I get anyone telling me that, oh, it's not that bad. And oh, you're overreacting. Fuck you. Okay? I am going to hold this fucking grudge till the day I fucking die. Archaeologists... In 10,000 years, they're going to dig up my fucking skeleton and they're going to fucking say, wow, this guy was really fucking pissed about something when he died. He, he, actually, he's still pissed now. He's got like crystals growing out of his old bones that are like made out of pure rage. Holy shit. Hello? Is this the retard department? Yes, yes, this is this is the CEO of TF2. I, I, I would like you to bring in your finest retards into my office. Yes. Yes. Only only with the most chromosomes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We, we yes. Yes.